Well, if you're a little tired tonight, like, uh, like us, it's probably because you stayed up all night watching the election results come in. And, and this, was the, uh, this was the image you saw at the end of the night here in North Carolina, a state shaded red, a state that for the third election in a row voted for a Republican president, Donald Trump, and a Democratic governor, this time Josh Stein. Yeah, in this election, North Carolina also elected a Democratic lieutenant governor, a Democratic attorney general, and a Democratic state superintendent. So are we red or are we purple? Well, it kind of comes down to the central question that we got from a viewer named Megan. Her email reads, how did Josh Stein and other Democrats win in North Carolina? Yet, NC also voted for Republican Trump. Why did voters choose two different parties? So there are some different answers to this. Let's, let's talk about it and try to get try to get down, boil it down a bit. Well, really, it is kind of a thing for North Carolina, for, for voters to split their ticket, you know, vote for some candidates on the ballot from one party and other candidates for another. The executive director of Emerson College polling said last month, 8% of Trump voters plan to split their ticket and also support Stein. A Catawba College uh, politics professor told us something similar. We've had several election cycles now where we see this very small sliver, 6% or typically less, uh, of swing voters bouncing down the ballot. I think that the, this will continue into the future, but you know, every election is different. Bouncing down the ballot from one to another. There was a lot of bouncing in this election. Check out this map. It shows all of the counties that voted for Republican candidate Trump and Democratic candidate Stein. Among those in our area, Franklin, Granville, Lee, and Nash counties, plus Alamance County, just to our west. Two big ones to focus on, Anson and Nash counties. Yeah, they're the only two counties that flipped this year. In 2020, they went Biden. Last night, they flipped Trump. Robeson County went Trump for the second election in a row. And during our noon newscast, WRAL state government reporter Will Doran explained why this is so significant. Robinson County may be the most diverse county in the state, even the nation. About a third of the people there are white, a third black, a third Native American. Trump, you'll see, got 63% of the vote in that incredibly diverse county down there in southeast North Carolina. So it wasn't just the mid-sized counties, though. Okay, so, so Harris also lost ground in some of the big cities, too. Biden had 62% in Wake County in 2020. Harris got less than that. She was down to 61%. Biden had 66% in Mecklenburg County, down by Charlotte in 2020. Harris, again, less than that, 65%. One point doesn't sound like a lot, it sounds small, but that represents tens of thousands of votes coming out of that Democratic stronghold. This is a trend that we saw happen nationwide. Yeah, and, and with all this in mind, splitting the ticket for president and governor is pretty normal for North Carolina. In the past 12 presidential elections, get this, only two Democrats won North Carolina. In the last 100 years of North Carolina governor's races, only three Republicans won. Isn't that interesting? Remember though, this isn't just about the president and the governor. Like we said, the Democrats also won a lot of the other big state statewide races. How did this happen? Well, our NC Capital team says money and mm -hmm. ads and a pretty horrible race run by Republican Mark Robinson may have played a pivotal role. Democrats tried to use the association with Robinson against Republicans in some of the House and Senate districts. They thought that maybe Robinson's comments on abortion, particularly around tighter uh, restrictions, uh, might have turned off some moderate voters. Republicans told us that their internal data said that that wouldn't move the needle. However, uh, today they acknowledge that that may have played a role in, in some of these races. You think about those political ads, right? What are the ones that stick out the most? Boy, we heard a lot of anti-Robinson ads being yeah. tied to all those other candidates. But it is something to keep in mind as we move forward all of this. When you drive down the street, you see a Trump sign on one side, a Harris sign on the, on the other, people, neighbors. You may think that those people don't have much to agree on, but it really just isn't that simple in right. a state like North Carolina. No, right? There are people who voted for Trump and Stein and Hunt and Green and Jackson. Mm -hmm. 
There are people who voted the opposite in some other combination, right? We may never know how many people overlap, but we do know that the overlap exists. And I know you've heard it before, but the numbers, they don't lie. Uh, we have some disagreements. We have different beliefs. We have different ideas, but maybe, you know, we have a little bit more in common than we think following a, uh, you know, a tough election like the one we just yeah, went through. Exactly. It's kind of encouraging to hear.